Welcome back everyone to the Chassis Variant Series, myself, Crystal Rocket, and we continue with the glorious domination of the Mad Dog. Now this is the Bravo configuration, which uh, I also like to refer to as the Kitchen Sink configuration, as uh, the clans weren't quite sure what it is they wanted, so they thought, fuck it, we'll have everything. This is a all-purpose build, it has two ER large, three medium pulse lasers, an LRN20, and two Streak 6. The thing is just bristling with firepower for every occasion. You don't need to worry about what you're going to come up against because you've got something to shoot it with. Ammunition is a tiny bit of an issue, especially with the lower, slightly lower armor values on the Bravo compared. I did have to drop some of the armor to uh, make sure I had enough ammunition to make it workable, which you will immediately want to, obviously, change with the uh, Bravo configuration if you buy it. The main reason to buy this one realistically is the Omnipod and the arms because the right arm has three energy hard points, the left arm is two. So the main selling point of this one is that I believe it's the Mad Dog that has the most energy hard points in uh, Macquarie Online. And it has three missile hard points which makes it the second largest number for missiles, though the A still trumps that quite considerably with six. So ultimately, yeah, if you're just looking at a purely a hard point um, setup, if you bought the right arm from the B and the left arm from the H, you could bring a Mad Dog, for instance, that comes with six energy hard points, couple that with six from the A. You could have a 12 energy hard point heavy, maybe boating smaller weapons, but shit, it's a hell of a lot of firepower. So, uh, the Bravo version, though, actually does work quite well, even in its stock configuration. Uh, because it can uh, engage targets at all ranges, it means you don't have to fire everything to generate too much heat. Uh, as long as you maintain fire discipline and using the ER larges at extreme ranges backed with the LRN20 for targets that are in the open that can be hit by the missiles, you can then focus on just using the medium pulses and the streaks to knock out targets uh, quite quickly when they get close. And it means that you've got a pretty hefty punch regardless of what you're going to come up against, which is really nice. Uh, the Bravo is a fantastic uh, stock setup. Uh, obviously, tweaking it one way or the other I think works uh, quite well in its favour, whether that's sweeping it to be all streaks or going with more of an LRM heavy build. Probably switching the ER largest, to be honest, down to all, more medium pulses or just having it all as ER mediums or whatever you want to do with that because the two ER larges are quite hot. Um, but yeah, outside of that, it's, uh, it's just one of those really good straightforward simple mechs to use as well. Uh, a bit like running the Timberwolf and it's probably one of the reasons why the Mulcher and the Mad Cat are the two, probably the two most iconic clan mechs and in the big four of Battletech's pantheon of battle mechs, uh, the Marauder, the Warhammer, uh, the Mad Cat and the Vulture are probably the, the four that most typify battle mechs um, marketing and their, their, you know, the, the most recognisable battle mechs, probably followed closely by the likes of the the Atlas, for instance, and a couple of other choice examples. But yeah, the the Vulture is definitely one that I think if you're if you're buying clan mechs, the Vulture is your best 60 tonner in my opinion, and the Timberwolf or Mad Cat is your best 75 tonner. And I don't think you're going to get much better than either of those two in those weight classes. Uh, as such, there's very little. Um, that you can never say that's really bad about the Vulture. It, it does have lower armor, but its speed is pretty good. Its fire, the amount of firepower it brings is phenomenal for nearly every occasion, as I said, regardless of what configuration you're running it in. Stock, it's very good. And customized, it's even more brutal. Um, uh, as I said, you can, you can really go to town with a lot of the clan stuff anyway. And uh, yeah, if you haven't bought a Mad Dog Bravo or a Mad Dog at all, you should definitely pick one up. I keep flitting between Mad Dog and Vulture because I know there's an audience out there for clan stuff and they want it to be named. No, no, you can only name it uh, the, the clan names. Because Smoke Jaguar, they get a hard arm whenever they hear the names. And, you know, using the Inosphere names because that's what they were originally called. When, you, know, you can't dodge that. The original book, technically out 3050, referred to them by the Inosphere names until they reveal a little bit later on, you know. So, um, and I think some of the Inosphere names sound better. Vulture just sounds a lot meaner than Mad Dog. It was like, you know, it's just mad. That, could, that could be an angry pug, you know? Whereas a Vulture is a big fucking bird. 
uh, that, that, like, you know, tear shit out of you. You know, what would you want? A mad cat? Oh, that's a bit of a pissed off Scottish fold. Or you can, you know, you have the Timberwolf. Yeah, to be fair, Timberwolf's probably better on that one. So, you know, they kind of flip between. Probably the clan names would be better. Timberwolf and Mad Cat. Mad Cat's a bit silly, but there's a reason Mad Cat there. Anyway, rambling again, just like in the Alpha. Feeling the time. So, uh, yeah, there's not much left to this one. Rubelite, uh, the enemy team just, I don't know, they just filtered in, unfortunately, and it was. You know, it's, it's that uh, snowball effect, once you get one kill, two kill, and then everybody starts to get disheartened and the match starts to fall apart and one team just gets a clear advantage and there's no way you're coming back from that. Uh, the, you know, the, the tried and true story of Macquarie Online's matches. Oh well. That's a good one, so thanks for watching everybody. Oh, it's the end, bye! Uh, nearly missed that one.